that time already oh my god welcome ladies and gentlemen to the paranormal portal i'm your host brent thomas it's our friday edition of all of this paranormal fun that you can handle in the next two hours so uh if you can handle more than that then you're just pretty amazing um we're gonna bring it all to you though we've got a great show lined up for you tonight and i'm not alone First and foremost, I have my good friend, co-pilot on the SS Paranormal Portal, uh, the big toe himself, Mr. Don Longbeard. How you doing, man? <laughs> the SS. Does that stand for shit show? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Usually. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, Usually. We love, wait, hi, everybody. Hi. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Yeah, so I'm doing good. Good. And you all set for this uh, crazy uh, adventure well, into the yeah. portal? Two okay. hours of... Mayhem, mayhem. Yep, that's what we do. Yep. We do it as well as we can. We do it you, good. You made it home, Brent. I did. I, I, <laughs> I you know what? Actually, that I, I wasn't sure I'd be able to. Uh, you're right. I kind of slipped my mind, but uh, my original plans ended up getting canceled and postponed. So that'll be happening sometime next week, I'm sure. So uh, for tonight, we are having a show, and by God, this is live and absolutely unrehearsed, so <laughs> this is as good as it's going to get. It's painfully obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although it looks like we're a well-oiled machine here, we aren't. <laughs> the best oiled thing in here is my beard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <sighs> yeah, um, but we are going to bring you the best show we know how to bring you. First, before we go any further, I'd like to thank tonight's sponsor, every night's sponsor, when we do these YouTube shows. The special peoples. The special people, Yes. Well, let's take a look at a, at a really new cryptocurrency called Cryptid Coin, ladies Cryptid and gentlemen. Coin. Cryptid Coin is a brand new cryptocurrency that has the paranormal art. Uh, <laughs> Cryptid. Sorry. Cryptid research at its heart. Sorry. I'm, I'm just <laughs> catching up with myself. Cryptid research at its heart. Um, the beauty of this is it is a cryptocurrency, and as such, it's very different from any of the other ones out there in that... Most cryptocurrencies out there are different in name only. They're basically the same function. However, the the impetus, the, the genesis for creating Cryptid Coin was to help bring some funding to cryptid research around the world. Cryptozoological research up until this point has been largely conducted just by individuals and their own resources, blood, sweat, and tears. 
But uh, this is an endeavor to bring funding to research teams across the world uh, through a grant system. Uh, and, of course, that's a phenomenal idea, and I was really pleased to take part in that for the Paranormal Portal. And uh, I hope that uh, if you want to learn any more how to invest or how to uh, become a grant participant, then go to cryptidcoin.io. And get more information. Again, that's cryptidcoin.io and uh, learn more. So special thank you to Cryptid Coin for continuing to sponsor us. We haven't screwed that up yet, Don. Nope. (laughs) It would kind of really suck, actually. uh, It would really, really suck. Yeah, I'm really excited about (laughs) what this is going to bring to the community because I think it has the potential to really push cryptid research to the next level. And so that's pretty exciting stuff. So. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled program, and that is, of course, the SS Portal, the SS Paranormal <laughs> Portal. Yeah, as we churn through the 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 what is it, the event horizon of <laughs> of the portal. Oh, there you go. Yeah, huh? huh? Being, being being torn apart to a naked singularity. <laughs> Hey, 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 it's like a family the, show. There will like, be no naked singularities in here. I, I like the naked part, not the singularity. <laughs> I, yeah. It's because you ain't seen me naked. That's why you used <laughs> to well, And that's the way it's got to stay. <laughs> you got that right. Yeah, talk about SS. You ain't yeah, that cute. There. <laughs> All right. Or well-funded. So. <laughs> or, yeah, well, that's I need, true. I need a lot bigger yeah. you know, funding. <laughs> So yeah. um, let's uh-huh. let's let's burn this up and and continue <laughs> okay. to the news. The news. Let's do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Paranormal Portal News Desk. I'm your anchor, Brent Thomas, by my joined by my co-anchor, Mr. Don Longbeard. And we're going to bring you some news. So I hope you're ready to get informed. Because uh, if you are, you might be in the wrong place. But we're going <laughs> to we'll bring you some stories anyway. Uh, hopefully they're good stories. All uh, right. The first one up to bat tonight here on the portal after I close all the embedded advertisement uh, is an article being brought to you by unexplained-mysteries.com. And again, this is a phenomenal site, these guys. I love their site. They're doing a hell of a job over there. So definitely support them if you can. But this is uh, unexplained-mysteries.com. Um, the Yowie, could Australia's Bigfoot actually exist? Yes. Okay, moving on to other news. All right. <laughs> no, Woo-hoo! Yeah. Well, I have no doubt that there's a Yowies. I mean, there's no question with all of the all of the firsthand experiences we've heard along with our friends at Australia Yowie Research. Yep. Uh, um, uh, Sarah Bignell. Yep, Sarah Bignell is doing some Central. amazing stuff on yep. Yowie Central, talking to uh, firsthand experiences. And uh, our good friend Kate over there covers Kate. it quite a bit too, Kate over Morgan. on the Believe podcast. So I don't have any question at all. And, of course, those thermal images that came on AYR from last yeah. year are just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So groundbreaking stuff going on over there, folks. So I don't have any doubt, but let's see what this article says. It says, over the years, there have been hundreds of sightings of large bipedal ape-like creatures in the Australian outback. Uh, although encounters with large bipedal hominids are mostly associated with North America and the Himalayas, not really true but anyway stories of such creatures have been reported for hundreds of years in countries all over the world including russia china and even australia where it's known locally as the yowie one witness queenland resident dean harrison what no no kidding outstanding yeah we're name dropping already who's who has been on the show and you can certainly find that in our archives little uh, pride here, um, maintains that he had encountered such a creature in 1995 at his home on Mount Tambourine in the Gold Coast hinterland. In the darkness behind the swamp, there was this noise booming and guttural. It made my hair stand on end, he said during an interview with Australian news outlet 7news.com.au. On top of the noise, it was bipedal. I could hear it walking, tra- trading Tra- treading, I think they mean, but they said trading. Treading through the swamp, and it starts to rip foliage out of the ground and throw it into the air. It'd be much better if I had a good Australian accent, but uh, I don't. Uh, ABC Just drink of Fosters. <laughs> it's Fosters, Fosters, Australian for beer. Uh, ABC North Coast radio host Gary Opit 
claims to have received dozens of calls from people with similar stories over the last 20 years. You know they're going to pull our honorary Australian badge now, right? <laughs> <laughs> we know Foster sucks, just for the record. Don't, pull, don't disown us, Australia. We love you guys. Uh, generally, they encountered a gorilla-like animal, and you could call it a very hairy man-like animal, but one that stands about 1.5 to 2 meters tall or larger. He said, and they all describe a very powerful body, very muscular chest, and with the head perched on the shoulder a bit like a muscular footballer, with not much sign of a neck, and very powerful with muscular arms and a powerful body, powerful legs. So, could there really be a new species of bipedal ape-like creature roaming Australia? Yes, there could. That's my input. Um, but it would be a new species, or would no, it just be it's, an undiscovered species? Well, it's, I don't think it's new. It's the, of course, stories of the Yowie are, are well, go yeah. way back to the Aboriginal people. But peoples. that's starting to sound more like a bunyip. Well, those are the smaller ones, aren't they? Yeah, one, yeah. Well, one to two meters tall is only six foot. Yeah, 1.5. Yeah. yeah, it's probably more like a bunyip. But the big ones are big just ones. as big as our Bigfoot big over ones. here, if not, you know, yeah. if not even sometimes bigger. Well, I mean, there's lots of range. But anyway, the jury's certainly still out, but one thing is for sure, all these witnesses must be seeing something. Exactly what is that something might be, however, remains a topic of debate. Well... I'm not debating it. I know they got them over there. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. no question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, remember when we had Truckee on the show and he right. shared his, his encounter on the on the podcast? Right, yeah. Incredible encounter. That was and, amazing. Yeah, I mean, there's several coming out of there. And when Sarah was on, she shared some of the many stories that she's experienced. Yeah, that, that one that we played was pretty intense. Yeah, yeah. and even when Dean was on and, yes. and talked about his, his incredible experiences right. along with the, the experiences he's heard about. It's just, it's so much... There's so much evidence over there for this being a, a very real phenomena. Right. It's just, what are they? I don't know. That's the big question mark for me. What are they? But well, I guess I, eventually I think we'll probably find out. But as of now, we just don't know. But very cool article. I think there's no question they exist. Let's move along. What do you say, Don? Let's move along. Move along. Next. Move along. Go trucking, trucking. Um, all right, there we go. Okay. I don't know. I just felt I was moved. I, I was moved there, Don. You was moved? I was moved. I was moving. Uh, no, I'm just going to talk about my uh, functions. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's skip that one. Well, let's skip that one, shall we? All yeah. right, so we're going to go to another article from unexplained, or unexplained-mysteries.com. Let's see. I want to check something here quick, and this article is... Coming. Ah, I didn't think so. Yeah, I was uh, wondering about that. Where are you? Yeah, there you are. I was about to say. I had to turn it ah, off for some reason. Don's there on the screen. He's he's part of the team. Because that happened last week, too. Or yeah, I Wednesday didn't notice too, it yeah. until after the show. Yeah, I was watching a replay. And I was like, oh, wait. So I just wanted to check and see if I turned it on yet. All right. Yes, you turned me on. <laughs> the camera. You turned my camera on. <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> not, not live on the show, Don. Don't. <laughs> Monster photographed at Wimbledon Park Lake. So we got kind of a creature feature tonight with a lot of creature stories in the news. And this is coming from January 30th of this year. Wow. Um, Wimbledon Park Lake. I'm not sure where that is, but I'm sure they'll let us know. A construction manager recently snapped a picture of something unusual in a lake in southwest London. Oh, okay. So this is the UK. Uh, Arek Chitros had been going out for a stroll along the water's edge one morning when he noticed what appeared to be a neck and a body of a dark-colored creature protruding from the surface of the lake. Wow. The photograph he took quickly went viral with social media users and news outlets alike commenting that the, the image's resemblance to iconic photographs of the Loch Ness Monster. The Wimbledon Worm. <clears throat> Is that what it's called? I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I thought you. Just, I thought kidding. you had some knowledge it's here. It's on me. It's on me. All right. Many speculated that the monster could be a dog or a swan. What? Well, that's quite a. That's <laughs> a little bit of a spread. A bit of a stretch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could be a mino too. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. However, this one. Uh, this is one mystery that does have an explanation, as Kratos himself knew exactly what it was when he took the picture. It's a tree, he said. Oh. <laughs> why, why did we go through this whole story if wow. it's a tree? It's a, it's a tree. <laughs> as soon as I spotted, I thought of Nessie, hence, once I snapped the picture. Hence, I snapped the picture. Okay. Despite the down-to-earth explanation, the 35-year-old is still open-minded and uh, about lake monsters. You never know what's hiding in the unknown. 
Okay, <laughs> that's a great, that's a great statement. There should be a, that should be a T-shirt, Don. <laughs> okay. You never know what's hiding in the unknown. Okay. Yeah, the, hence the name, unknown. So, so should, <laughs> so should it be? So should I put it in quotes? You never know what's hiding in the unknown. In quote, he said. <laughs> nah, well, yeah. Or maybe. should I actually give it the actual tribute to who said it? Um, you know, I, I think we should just leave it as the ambiguous. He said, "Yeah, he said." <laughs> uh, if a if a real Nessie exists, then it's got to be some dinosaur that refused to go extinct. I'd like to think that it does exist. Well, thanks for taking a picture of a log. That helps. Yeah, yeah. that really moved the needle on that one. <laughs> Captain's log, star date Wimbledon. <laughs> Wimbledon Park Lake. I saw a log surface and snapped a photo. Um, yeah, great. Good for you, buddy. All right. Well, that's uh, mystery solved, Scoob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right there, the green one. Oh, the green one. There you go. There it is. Have at it. I got to push a different button. <laughs> <laughs> you push buttons all night long, let me that's tell what, you. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> All right, so let's go on to the next news article in our in our frenzy of fun here on the paranormal. Uh, the next one is also from unexplained-mysteries.com. And i got to close this ad first. Thank you very much. All right, here's a, a mystery six-foot creature spotted on rural road in England. There's a lot going on in the UK tonight, wow, folks. Yeah. This story is from February 24th, 2022, so it's really wow. rather new. Yeah, it's Look at that photo, though. That's wow. pretty wild. God, you know those those kind of roads kind of creep me out. <laughs> I gotta admit, you know, yeah, I, they'd be awesome, but yeah, those kind of road be kind of. Mm. Uh, I'll put a link into the TFR so those people over there can have a look if there is anybody there. Yeah, Bam's over there; he can take bam, a look. Hey, Bam! And so is great guest. Wham, Good to see you guys. Bam. He is the man. Yeah, Bam's always showing up, man. Yep. He's 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 like he's committed. We really need to get Sophia on the on the show. She's always watched the show from. Yeah, she's watching every show, as far as I understand. She watches everything. A witness who had been driving home in the early hours of Sunday morning encountered something very unusual. The incident, which which occurred around 2 a.m. on Sunday morning on the A425 near Starveton in Northamptonshire, has since been described online by a witness who goes by the name of Galloping High Road. Mm. Uh, we, had been taken, uh, we had been away for a few nights and traveled back quite late, they wrote. Towards the end of their journey, there was about a, uh, with, this was about at 2 a.m., and we were driving along uh, a road in a rural area when something crossed the road in front of us in full headlights of, for about three seconds. Ah. It was about the height of a person, maybe six feet or over. I might have read this one already. But it had short, powerful legs and hips, which seemed to move in a circular, fluid fashion. Ah. Like, you know, why am I thinking of like Sonic the Hedgehog when they say circular fluid fashion, you know, looked like wheels on him. That, no, nothing. Okay. All right. Sorry. I have to, yeah, I was. Okay. I'll give it to myself. <laughs> we, <laughs> it was not a deer because it stood on two legs. We drove back today as it's only seven miles from home to look at the road layout and whatever. It was moved into wide bowl shaped field dropping down to a stream. The story went on to generate quite a bit of de debate online and was picked up by several news sites. As things stand, however, the identity of the creature that the witness saw that night remains a total mystery. Well, there's no photos, right? Okay. Hey, well, so it's a mystery. Yeah, that's why this. I, I think I really think dash cams are going to bring bring to light a lot of this stuff, at least to give us something to work with, right? Other than just you know straight anecdotal evidence, but. How many times do we hear road crossings of, of Dogman, right. Bigfoot, and other creepy things like the white the white crawlers or whatever they call them? Right. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, honestly, you know, the only people that really use road cams <coughs> or, or car cams are the Russians. Oh, oh well, God, yeah, that's all true. Got cams. Yeah, all Russian cams. Yeah. You can cars sit and watch cams. Russian accidents all, <laughs> all day, day long. long. Yeah. You can watch them a week, a week straight. Just yeah. Just not see the same one twice. Right. There's oh so many gosh. of them over there. But, I mean, they're onto something, I think, because... For one, I can imagine it's probably got to help your insurance rates, yeah. you know, and and the to reduce insurance frauds and stuff. Yeah, well, they, they're you see those ones where those people are like trying to throw themselves onto the car, right. and then roll on the ground like, oh. I actually had that happen to me in Seattle one time. Did you really? Yeah, I was pulling out of a of, a, of an alley in Seattle, <laughs> right, and this, uh -huh. I, I come to a stop, <laughs> full stop, you know, to to look, and this guy just comes out of nowhere and just rolls. Over the hood of my car. I'm like, what the hell? He hits the ground on the other side. He's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you hit me. Oh, get out of here. Get 
daddy here, <laughs> yum bum. Uh, that's 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 <laughs> tragic. Like, oh my god. Yeah, it's pretty sad. And then they'll have somebody standing by as a I witness. Saw it all. A I witness. saw it all. Right? Yeah, that's the way it works. Go away. It's a scam. But yeah, I think, uh, and then also, not only for insurance reasons, but for the fact that there's a lot of road crossings, folks. People are always seeing these creatures running across roads. Yeah. yeah. So I think probably it's going to be the way the next Patty Patty film is is uh, procured is that's just not, by some yeah, dash cam. That's not a bad idea. That's not no. a bad assumption. You know. Here's another one from unexplained-mysteries.com. Unidentified animal baffles experts in Pennsylvania, I've January twenty second. Pennsylvania. No, it's not you. They oh, weren't okay. talking about you. No. Um, and they put oh, it on like a leopard skin blanket. That That's, looks like a Tazzy tiger. Well, yeah, thylacine. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe. But it, I think they're called like blue dogs or something like that. Is oh, what I've been hearing. Yeah, yeah. A mysterious animal that resembles some sort of dog or coyote has been discovered in the west of the state. The enigma first presented itself earlier this week when a resident, Christina Eith. Uh, I think that's how you'd say it. Now, noticed an animal outside her home that appeared to be lost and was shivering from the cold weather. Her first thought was that it was her neighbor's dog. However, on closer inspection, the animal looked somewhat unusual, so she decided to call wildlife experts for a second opinion. When they examined the animal, they were unable to tell what it was either. It wasn't long before the mystery had ended up on the local TV news, and I honestly can't identify or definitely say what it is, but to err on the side of caution since they can carry rabies and since it might be a coyote, we can keep it there or keep it here, but genetic testing done and go from there, said wildlife rehabilitator Morgan Barron. It could be some time, however, before, before the results of the testing are known. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to watch the news clip, but uh, it's very curious. Um, this does look very similar to some of the reports coming out of Texas. Right. You know, of that really mangy-looking uh, dog with the weird uh, growths on the back of its thighs. Oh. Um, have you not seen that? No, I guess oh. not. Yeah. I, I mean, mean I've seen koi dogs. It was it was a, a, a veterinary. Uh, I think she's a veterinary. It was losing chickens like crazy. Right. And uh, then she she saw one. And apparently some, some police officers followed one on a, and had the dash cam cooking. And oh. you can see it running down the road, and it's got a really stout, like staunch body, right. like short legs, but a really oversized head. Right. And it's you know quadrupedal and stuff. But then she said she got a call that one was hit, or it was hit, and had been you know killed in a, since being hit. And she, she took it home and like had it taxidermied. So it's really pretty incredible. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's kind of a it seems to be some new species that popped up, but this looks a lot like that. So I don't know what it is, but there you go. Strange animals in Pennsylvania doesn't surprise me at all. Pennsylvania and Ohio to me are like the, the weird states, and I love both places. But on you know understand, there's a lot of reports coming out of both those states. Well, and oddly enough, Rigger Ridge says, "Hey, check this out." Upper Sandusky, Ohio, is below Lower Sandusky, Ohio. And then he goes on to say, <laughs> Ohio is weird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> there is that. Um, I, I don't have a doubt of that. Um, let's get to the last of our news articles for tonight, and this is from unexplained-mysteries.com. New petition calls on U.S. government to release UFO videos. Apparently, Don, the appetite's been wet. Oh, well, you think? Yep. This is from February 26th. It says the petition aims... Down to persuade the U.S. government officials to release classified UFO footage to the public. Mm. I mean, you might as well. They got those those Tic Tac videos. Well, they, they already released it back well, in, what, July of last year? And they're like, here you go. Yeah, well, the, the yeah, I mean, the, and the Navy didn't disown it and actually offered their pilots to be interviewed. So um, I, I don't know. I don't know why they would keep any of it quiet now anyway. Yeah. 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 Uh, while things have been moving in the right direction with regard to UFO disclosure in recent years, the fact remains that much of the evidence continues to remain classified and out of reach. Keen to see this material released to the public, UFO enthusiast Adam Goldsack. <laughs> Sorry, I'm such a kid. <laughs> Who is from the UK has created a new petition demanding that such evidence be made available. The radical transmedium technology, transmedium technology, wow, uh, of That's unidentified aerial trans, phenomena. Trans awesome. <laughs> yeah, I guess just so. transmedium. Uh, just trans psychic, not in the medium. Uh, use, uh, it is currently being withheld from the American public, he wrote. 
The uh, UAPTF DNI preliminary reports on UAP found that 143 of 144 cases were classified as unidentifiable. We request that new UAP off, uh, the new UAP office created by Congress to make available all unclassified videos and cases so that civilian science can investigate and better understand this technology. The petition, which has been fo- can be found here, and there's a link to it, has, has so far managed to elicit over 3,800 signatures. However, it has also been receiving an increasing amount of media attention, meaning that over time this number should rise significantly. Sadly, though, regardless of the number of signatures it does eventually receive, it seems unlikely that the U.S. government will make a move to declassify UFO video footage based on this alone. But I'll put the, I'll put the link in both chats. And if you feel so uh, inclined. so inclined, you can go over there and uh, sign the position yourself. And the link is in the article that I am posting. Uh, where am I here? Where am I? There I am. And we're about perfect too, Don. Yeah. We made it through the news. And the uh, first half hour. Yeah, right on target. Yep. Right on target because we do have to take breaks. But that'll conclude tonight's news broadcast, folks. Let's get back to the show. And what do I do? What do I do? Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks for tuning into the news. And we got a lot more show to go here. Uh, Android Purity says Paranormal Portal. It was not that it was not the Navy that released them. It was Jeremy Corbell who leaked them from his secret sources, which then forced the Navy to admit that they were real. Gotcha. Yeah, I guess they're, I, I, I did know that they were not supposed to be released. I just didn't know who had done it, Jeremy Corbell. Okay, very cool, Android. Thanks for the information. Love those kind of things. Love how you guys help paint the full picture. Mm, excuse me, so much, because I can't help it. I'm just me. All right, so we are cruising through the night already, almost up to the first break. If you're new to the show, if you're just bumping into us now, trying to see what the hell's going on here, (laughs) on Fridays and Saturday nights, we are, of course, uh, linked up to the TFRlive.com, as well as, uh, which is is then streamed on iHeart, Tune In and Talk Stream Live Networks. So there is half-hour breaks. And so just so that you use on, those of you on YouTube, don't have to listen to commercials i made up some uh, video segments to keep you occupied during that time and uh otherwise you can just talk quietly amongst yourselves but we will be right back in just a couple minutes just don't go away don't do it don't leave us we'll be right back
Well, folks, that's the end of that break. I uh, hope you made it okay and are willing and able to jump into more of the Paranormal Portal fun that you've come to expect. Now, just for those of you out there who are listening, uh, if you want to call in, you have something to share paranormally to the discussion, by all means. would love to hear from you. The number to call in is 720-923-0500. That's right, 723-920-923-0500. Did I say 720 the first time? He said 72. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 723. No, it's 720. That's what I said. 720. 720-923-0500. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. So call in if you want to share something of your own that's paranormally related. Yeah. But we're going to get into some Bigfoot and stuff here. Bigfoot. Because we love us some Bigfoot and done. In the SS Paranormal Portal. Yes, sir. The Paranormal Portal SS. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. That's just not good. <laughs> how do I how do I mute that? <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to get into some uh, stories about the Bigfoot, as you've come to love them, and we got some other things too that we can get to. Um, but first of all, I want to bring to your attention an article that was brought to my attention, and uh, this was pretty cool. Um, so it's a, it, the article is called story maps dot a R C G I S dot com. And it's, it's a it, kind of a cool, cool article. And it talks about the history of, of native American legends and stories of, of what we understand to be the Sasquatch, or at least uh, what we think is the same thing. And it's native Americans and Sasquatch since the origin of time, these groups have long been connected, and it's a great article, really well done, by Michael Benton II. And uh, it's from 2021, May 16th, 2021, that he wrote this. But really fascinating. He really pulls on a lot of different information here and uh, did a nice job. Let me uh, blow it up a little bit so I can read it a little better because I am visually challenged when it comes to uh, small font. All right, so he says, he opens up the article and says, this project is a culmination of some of my greatest interests throughout my life. Native American mythology and history, along with the growing field of cryptozoology. My interest in Native American history was sparked by my grandfather telling me different stories and things he has seen throughout his life and showing me some of his favorite Western movies with natives depicted. Seeing this as a child made me want to gain more information on the various tribes, such as origin stories, mythology, and tribal legends, which is amazingly, uh, uh, it's really brilliant that so many people are starting to adhere to that. And, and just a quick little anecdotal story. Um, I used to own a house in Minnesota that was built in 1894, and it was built by the Densmore family. And I, you know, I didn't really know a whole lot about this before I got into it, but um, apparently the woman who was, was the daughter of the man who built the house, her name was Frances Densmore, well, she, she would sit up in the, in, the, in the house. The legend goes that she would sit up in the window of the house listening to the Native American drums on the hills. And she was uh, into music as a child and, and very musical. And so she would sit and transcribe the drum beats, the timing and all of that. And so she did that and, and ended up dedicating her life to then going from tribe to tribe throughout, the, throughout a lot of the America uh, and transcribing and, and recording their, their customs and music and songs and stuff. And... Uh, her work is now, well, it was at least then, is on permanent exhibit in the Smithsonian in Washington. And as I understand it, a lot of the tribes have gone back to revisit her work to, re, to recall or regain some of their customs that have been lost. And what a really cool thing. If she hadn't done that, some of those things would be lost to time. They would just be gone. And that would be some parts of those of those cultures that had just been forgotten or removed or whatever so um i think that anybody that takes it the time to go th and and record histories like right. this i think is brilliant and so important because we learn a lot from our histories we learn a lot from uh looking back and we can apply that hopefully going forward not that we're real good at that part but we're supposed to be but um 
let me see, uh, especially the ones it says, uh, but as I began reading more and more into the culture and reading stories from different tribes, especially the ones in the Appalachian mountain region, I began noticing a trend. The trend was that there was a lot of reference of larger creatures, bigger than man, interacting with them through eternity. These beliefs and stories can be found throughout the Native American folklore, especially in the Cherokee, Shawnee, and the Iroquois, to name a few in the Appalachian Mountain region. But the history of Sasquatch and Native American tribes does not end in the Appalachia uh, region. Tribes in the Midwest and the Pacific Northwest have also been hotbeds for sightings, and the Pacific Northwest can be considered the Bigfoot capital of the U.S., this project was also inspired by the Travel Channel stories, Mountain Monsters, or series Mountain Monsters. The show itself furthered my interest in cryptozoological creatures, as well as giving some information about the creature they were hunting in accordance to the respective Native American tribes within the region. Now, I know that, <laughs> I know that uh, Mountain Monsters, when that show first came out, I was really kind of pumped. I was like, well, you know what? These are supposed to be mountain guys, you know, the hunters, trappers, things like that. You know, people very adept at uh, tracking and things like that and sign and, and knowing the forest pretty well. So I was really optimistic. <laughs> and then I watched it, and, and I, I don't, you know, maybe it was by design, but in my head that was going to be a whole different show than what it ended up being. <laughs> you know, and I'm not bad-mouthing any of those guys. I think it's, it, you know, it's it, it, one of the things that I think they did – really well which probably needed doing and hadn't been done prior was to go around to different regions of the area and and search for these different legends now i don't doubt that all of these legends are intertwined in that there were some some of the same creatures but they're just regional names and they would get into some of the stories and stuff of them so i think that was really cool and i think that that's that approach really did push the, you know, push the information forward into realizing what a national um, uh, phenomenon this, this Bigfoot is. And so I think that that part is good. But I think if you're, if you're really looking to learn a lot about cryptozoological research and, and uh, pursuits, that might not be the best forum to look for material. Right. Um, so he's also got a map in here. The first Americans located location of the major uh, you know, Native American groups and culture areas in the 1600s. And that's a really impressive map. Um, again, very cool. So there's another map, but he says the above maps and video showcase how different the landscape of the country was when Native Americans were at their peak of existence throughout the country. The above map showcases the native lands in the 1600s, which showcased how vast the Native American territory was at least until the settlers from Europe came over. As we all know, everything seemed peaceful in the beginning, even with smaller skirmishes that were bound to happen. But in the time after the War of 1812, feelings towards the natives began shifting as the new power regime began working and building the new nation. After the War of 1812 and the imminent approach westward of settlers, many believed it would be good to move them across the Mississippi to make sure that they still have land untainted by the newcomers, but the idea quickly became reality when Andrew Jackson implemented the Indian Removal Act mm -hmm. in 1830. God, what a horror. As well as creating tension between the groups were caused because the natives did not believe that that had to leave the land the Great Spirit had provided them generations ago. Alas, as the power had, had been shifted, the policy was enforced and the devastatingly emotional movement of the natives began taking place, and the first Americans lost the land where they were then sheltered into smaller reservations and organizational areas, as seen in the larger map above this writing. Well, the larger map is actually unpopulated, so I don't know what happened, if that's something broken in the link or whatever, but um, at any rate. Here's the first area, North Carolina. And uh, image credits, mountain monsters on the Travel Channel. Okay. The Sukalu or Sukalu goes by many different names in modern times due to translations or due to it picking up different nicknames over time. In English, Su, it's T S U L uh, apostrophe K A L U, but I, I think it's Sukalu. Uh, translates to slanted eyed giant or slope gi sloped giant. Or known by its common name, uh, or known by its common name, the Cherokee Devil. 
the, the in Cherokee folklore, the Sukalu is is also is known as one of the greatest hunters in the forest. But in more modern times, the creature is said to have mind controlling abilities, and if you make eye contact, it is quite possible you will never be the same ever again. Or in some severe cases, you may never be heard from again. Now, the Cherokee Devil does showcase characteristics showcased by other tribes, which is the ability to become invisible and or have some kind of magic powers. If you read the folklore, it will explain that the Cherokee Devil is not seen or is not visible due to lack of trust and a broken deal between himself and surrounding tribe members. Now, there is a link in here, and I'm going to put this link uh, into the chats as well. And, it, and it's one of the great legends of the, of the Cherokee devil or, um, uh, yeah, Cherokee devil or the Sukalu. And I did read it earlier today and it's interesting, but it's absolutely chock full of pronunciations that I'm sure I'm going to brutalize. And it's, it's more specifically geared towards that, that uh, specific legend. And I have to say that, um, in, in, in learning about some of these ancient legends of the First Nations peoples, it's for me it's hard to translate. Okay, what is what is really being observed versus what is put into like parable or or um, you know some kind of a story that's meant to teach. And and I think I think that in a lot of cases their legends were built around wanting to pass on knowledge yeah. as well as a history and it's hard to dif differentiate the two because I don't know that this narrative actually happened. Um, but well, man. you know, there's a lot of parables, right. That, you know, go around the world, you know, and, and whether they're, you know, biblical or, or deities or, you know, mm -hmm. folklore or ancient Greek, it, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, there's a lot of parables, right. Which are, which are, as you said, you know, the, the teaching, the teaching, you know, histories and 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 uh, uh tales and say things sure. like that you know that's like tom seawood you know um you know talks mm -hmm. about talks about the um uh, i'm gonna have my um kids uh, zunoqua zunoqua yeah mm -hmm. with the big hairy hand you know yep and uh the tunaqua yeah uh with the big hairy hand that picks you up and puts you in the basket you know and and it only it only grabs bad kids and kids who are doing wrong things and wow. you know things like that so i mean yeah a lot of them are parables but some of those parables you know there's got to be some kind of truth eventually somewhere right you know so right exactly and and, yeah. and the the interesting thing is that the legend that's that I just linked in the TFR chat as well as in the YouTube chat is it's a story of the first, the first meeting between uh, uh, one of the native people, a, a native maiden and one of the Sukalu. Um, and he, she didn't, it was like, she didn't really notice that it wasn't a human being, even though it's a giant explained in the story of, you know, hairy and huge proportions. Um, but ended up, you know, kind of becoming her, her husband. And and then went on to have offspring and and uh, to to then go away into the wilderness together, come back and visit, bring you know bringing things and and basically the story is one of uh, you know the the grandmother the grandmother or the mother of the of the of the maiden wanted to see what the new husband because he would only come over at night and leave in the morning before she could wake up and see him, but he always brought gifts of of meat and stuff like that, and so she she wanted to see him and then. He, he finally agreed that he would let her be let her see him and then he she did and freaked out and then he got mad and ran away and and then took took the maiden with him and went into the mountains and and so i'm not going to try to give you the whole cliff notes here but it's it's the way the story rolls and and it talks about the broken trust is right. is another part of the story right you really have to read it if you're interested in it but i think it's it's really fascinating um that that this this being which is still encountered today was so built into the folklore and built into the people you know and i find that very interesting not as not as a not that the offspring became part of uh you know the human tribe but it became part of the the sukalu tribe or whatever and so i find it it's fascinating it, it's just a, a native history so that link is up there folks you can check it out um i found it really great reading so next we're going to Kentucky and this one is this map showcases the Bigfoot sightings throughout the state of Kentucky, 
Uh, over time, Kentucky is known for Bigfoot sightings due to its landscape being surrounded by mountain ranges with peaks and hollers, gullies, and other river channels or river channels. But Kentucky is also known for having multiple tribes of Sasquatch living throughout the state's central counties and others throughout. Such clans include the wild man, an aggressively powerful Bigfoot that isn't scared of human interaction, and it also a descendant of the closely related Midnight Whistler clan. And the Midnight Whistlers were, were said to have said to kick out the wild men for exposing itself in daylight hours <laughs> when the majority of the cryptid creatures, um, when the majority of the cryptid creatures, and then it's dot, period. Um, but the Midnight Whistler itself is better suited for hunting in the darkest hours of, of midnight, as it name supplies, name implies, rather. Due to jet black fur and glowing green eyes adapted to hunting at night, but... From my research, I could not narrow it down the tribe in the region, describing the midnight, midnight whistler or other Bigfoot in the region that is not the Yahoo. Yeah, there's actually a Bigfoot known as the Yahoo as well. And, and on Mountain Monsters, it actually went, Yahoo! Yahoo! Yeah, I remember seeing that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there are some similarities in the stories. The story belongs to the Hoopa Indians talking about their Bigfoot's O-Man or O-Man. The old man is described uh, uh, to have had a high-pitched whistle-like howl when communicating with one another. And they live deep in the forest, and they would protect their land from the workers by tampering with the things in the dark of night when nobody was around. That seems similar to the Midnight Whistler in ways because they are nocturnal, as are most Bigfoot. And the Midnight Whistler is said to have a whistle call that resembles a locomotive or a train whistle as, they, as well as they will protect any land that is theirs against outsiders or even other Bigfoot clans in the area. So it's an interesting um, overview. Now, I do have to say, before Mountain Monsters, I'd never heard any of these references. Right, right. And uh, that's kind of the, the framework he's building this article around. But I, it doesn't surprise me because, of course, there was you know so many other names around the world for these large hairy beings right. so well these are those these are those regional terms that, yes that that we didn't know way back when you know mm -hmm. oh well it's this it's that yeah they were they all seem different but come to find out when we finally got the words bigfoot and sasquatch you know then it became the common terms yep. uh bigfoot and sasquatch instead of these regional names like right the you know the the bog monsters and this that and the other you know the boogers sure. You yep. know, the wood boogers, the boogers, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what that... But, you know, it, I, I have to tell you, for me, Mountain Monsters really tainted this information for me. Sure. You know, just because of... You know, they talked about the Midnight Whistler. Mm -hmm. They talked about the, 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 the Yahoo, mm -hmm. you know. They talked about the... But it was like, I'm having a hard time, because of that, relating to these stories, because I know Mountain <laughs> Monsters made it really commercialized it yeah it's like scooby-doo for, yeah, for exactly. adults it, it, yeah it was <laughs> and you know and then and then they got kidnapped and blah blah blah, blah. yeah you know? it and got all like, oh, stupid gosh. yeah you know but you know it kind of it kind of ruined this kind of history for me sure when it comes to this so when i hear them i think of the you know i watch you know huckleberry run around in there you know, <laughs> hey be quiet don't whistle in the woods <laughs> yeah yeah i, I know mm. let's get serious for a minute now, my little brother used to be good friends with some native kids in, back when he was in high school. And he, he told me that they told him that you're not supposed to whistle at night. All right, well, yeah. Yeah, so I wonder if that's somehow tied to the Bigfoot legends uh, for the tribes right. up in the in Minnesota area Or if well. it's just stick men, you know, stick sure. Indians and right. yep. you know, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's, it is interesting, but I, I have to admit I agree that the, the mountain monsters themselves just made it s like a soap opera of it. Right. And, and it was, it was still interesting in a, in a sense, but you really had to suspend belief when you're watching it. You yes. had to, because it was just so Ridiculous. far out there. I mean, they'd show up all over the place and boom, they would see one. They would have close interactions with these things, no matter where they went. Right. And I, you know, I'm s sorry, but none of them were track stars. Right. You know, they were all pretty big boys and uh, riding around in side by sides all through the, yeah, you know, through all the rough and, Yeah. <laughs> and crashing them from time to time, which was uh, kind of humorous. But, um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it for what it was, but I, I lamented what it wasn't. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, that's the differentiation for me. 
but I, I still, I, I think again, they did, they did talk about a lot of things that may not have ever become, you know, more widely known knowledge other than regional. Right. So um, this map showcases the Sasquatch sightings throughout one of the biggest cryptozoological hotbeds in the entire nation. With all the hollers and hills, the state provides safety for any cryptid creature, but even a seven-foot-tall bipedal human uh, could humanoid could hide in there, which shows the vast nature of the landscape. Also, there are many other mysterious creatures within the region, but that's a story for another time. West Virginia and other surrounding states have long been characterized by mysterious sightings, especially for large bipedal hairy creatures like the Sasquatch, but these sightings have been getting more and more frequent, causing mass hysteria. I don't know about mass hysteria, though. No. That's a little stretch. Increasing the interest in cryptids and investigations of the region for the said creatures. Um, yeah, so this is supposed to be a, a map of West Virginia and the sightings. And, you know, it does look like, uh, I don't know if this is actually riverways, but it does seem to, well, not really, unless there's a riverway between these states as well. Right. But there, there is, uh, there is a, like a U-shaped region that seems to have the majority of what's going on there. So... That would, that would be true to uh, a lot of other research that's been conducted as far as sightings along. Um, they seem to, they tend to use the riverways is what it, it appears to be. Right. Like they use riverways to navigate for whatever, you know, purpose. Or maybe it's just to be close to water because without it, you die. Um, the Yahoo is next. We're about four minutes, so we can cover the Yahoo. And they even have a clip from Mountain Monsters in here, but we're going to skip that. Yeah, thanks. Because, uh, you know, I don't feel like... Getting another copyright <laughs> strike. The Yahoo is one of the native uh, Bigfoots in West Virginia, but this clan of Bigfoots is more iconic than others. The clan of Bigfoot actually got its name over time as the people who have lived in the region kept hearing this distinctive Yahoo-like scream or yell coming from the woods. Yahoo uses this sound as a mode of communication amongst family units within the species to identify the location or warn of danger coming forth. They like their vocabulary as one word. Yeah. Yahoo! Um, I am Yahoo. <laughs> yeah, instead of Groot. Yeah. As stated prior, the Yahoo was seen throughout the time by the Native American tribes in the region, more specifically the Shawnee Indians. The Shawnee people also referenced the Yahoo as the Yoa, or Yo, y y y y Yayo, in their Kentucky region. And the name has been interchanged since then, but the story of the Yahoo is a curious one due to the fact that Daniel Boone claimed to have killed one in the surrounding states of West Virginia. In the surrounding states of yeah, West Virginia. There's, there's more than one? Yeah, I guess so. Um, but anyway, yeah, the Yahoo. So, I mean, it is cool that these are, <coughs> these are apparently rooted in First Nation stories and, and traditions. So, the Raven Mocker. Now, this one is a different one. I don't know. What the hell this is, even by the picture that they give us here. Uh, but that's, that strikes me more of like Skinwalker. Right, hose, yeah, you know, the, or a Wendigo or something. Head. Yeah, Wendy well, Wendigo more, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but Wendigo. we got two minutes before the break, I think. Yeah, I'll get yeah. through the Ravenmocker. The story of the Ravenmocker is one of a different feel than the others because the Ravenmocker is not just one thing. The creature is prominent in the Cherokee tribe throughout the mid-Atlantic region of the United States and is told to be a shape-shifting medicine man capable of, yeah, there you, there you go, capable of transforming into anything, most commonly an older person, coming into rob another of their life. Raven mockers are one of the most feared creatures in all of the Native American folklore. Due to fear, it brings the into the communities, especially the elders in the community, it may not may not be a full-fledged Bigfoot in a sense, but a lot of Native American tribes did believe Bigfoot does have some magical powers, and it would not surprise many to believe that the shape-shifting raven mocker could transform into a Bigfoot as well as the elderly human state it is known for. Mm. But is that, now there, there again, is that, a, is that an assumption based on the author? Uh, or, I mean, is he just saying, well, if it can change into one thing, it could be a Bigfoot too? Which, I don't know if that qualifies then, but if there's some there's some substance to him having this opinion then that would be you know that could be possible as well looks huh. like we're moving into where ohio ohio, ohio. i think we'll, we'll hold off ohio, and get that ohio one on the break, yeah. we're gonna get a uh, get to ohio after the break folks but uh it's very interesting and again um i don't know there's a there's i guess the 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 big thing is mountain monsters i think you're right don i think it 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 did 
sour thing. It soured things in a lot of ways because it made a, it really did create a mockery um, to the skeptics. The skeptics, of course, utilize that as a, a barometer to judge cryptozoological research in a lot of ways. And I think those kind of things really hurt the the pursuit because, you know, when 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 it's obviously being scripted and it's obviously right. being put together in an entertainment fashion, then it does take away from the whole. But we'll get back to this in just a couple of minutes, folks. Don't go away. More to come. Thank <laughs> you. 
are usually associated with an individual. Hauntings seem to be connected with an area. A house, usually. The guy's disturbances are fairly short duration, perhaps a couple of months. Hauntings can go on for years. Already an hour went by, Don. Wow, oh, already an hour because it must be an hour because Gigi just showed up. There you go. Well, we are all here, I guess. Yeah. Well, at least more. I'm sure more will come in. True. We always, we always end up to be a second hour heavier, which is which is cool. Um, but you uh, you guys are always welcome whenever you show up. We just yeah. love having you here. Yeah. We, we just are... get more dense in the second hour. That's why it's heavy. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know. Um, <laughs> Welcome to the SS Paranormal Portal. That's right. We are shipping it away. Yep. Diving through the depths of the portal. Shuttling bottle. through it. Shuttling. Surfing. Shuttling. <laughs> We're surfing. <laughs> we are uh, in the middle of an article from uh, storymaps.arcgis.com, and it's going uh, uh, talking about uh, some First Nations uh, traditions and legends about the Bigfoot, and we've gone through uh, several states already. It's you know none of these are real exhaustive, but they do bring up a lot of uh, fascinating names and histories, like uh, the the Yahoo, the the Whistler, Midnight Whistler, um, and some of the other ones that were mentioned. It's some of the, the some of these regional names are just fascinating, wow. um, and it's and it's interesting because I don't think these are all specifically individual creatures i think they are all you know the same i i believe i believe that th while there may be family lines and stuff i don't think that they're probably genetically all that different from each other you know no, no it, it'd be like you know us us you know pnws you know you know compared to like you know, bear down in, you know, southern Texas, you know, southeast Texas, yeah. you know, and well, he's actually in Alabama now, isn't he? I don't know. Yeah, um, it could be. I think you're right. But I mean, you know, and even they talk about, you know, even bear says they have different dialects, you know, depending sure. on where they're from. So, you know, some slur and some people have a Seattle slur. <laughs> some slur. Slur. Some people have a Seattle slur. Yeah, I've been told <laughs> I have a Seattle slur. Is there a sl slur? Okay. Yeah, I didn't I know guess that. so. I don't know all the stuff, but Somebody you know, asked I, me where's your accent from. I said um, Seattle. Oof, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine's from a lot of years of hard living, um, but yeah, I guess it's it's uh, there are regional. I'm sure there's regional discrepancies between them, but I think that probably they're all pretty much the same thing. I think now. I don't know. May, what if there were just that many different kinds of Bigfoot out there, yeah. like different kinds that they were they were very discernible from each other by very specific traits. Yeah, like the redheads and the brunettes. Right. Well, you know, or or it was more like the the <laughs> color of the eye shine, for instance. Oh, well, yeah, that comes they did, up. Man. Yeah, that, and that the is, green yeah. eye shine versus. Yep. That while sometimes we hear of red and, and sometimes we hear of yellow, but right. that is probably the only reference I've ever heard of green eye shine. Yep. But uh, I've heard a lot of red and yellow through the years. Um, could there be an offshoot that has uh, different color eyes? And I guess maybe. I don't know. Why not? Uh, it's certainly possible if there's you know very disparate gre breeding groups, then maybe they would develop their own individual unique traits that are that are distinctly different from others but let's check out the story about the ohio grass man which you know i think is a fascinating uh fascinating uh creature because 
it's one of the reasons it has the name Grassman, to my understanding, is that they found these grassy nests that were built, almost like almost like little domes of grass right. from the long prairie grasses and stuff built up into these heaps and look like nests inside. So they've attributed that to some form of Bigfoot. And is that... Is that a whole lot different than what they're finding in the Olympic project? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, the Olympic project. You know, machine, I don't, yeah. there seems to be some kind of nesting uh, instinct that would be very similar to like the gorillas of Africa and stuff. They are apparently, they apparently make nesting sites for themselves. So it seems to be a, a, a primate feature. But yeah, that's why they call it the grass mans because they make these grass piles, as far as I know. But let's, let's see what it says. It says the Ohio grass man is known for being the largest member of the Bigfoot family, and Grassman stands at an average height of 8 feet tall and weighs over 600 pounds, which, yeah, I don't know if that's the largest, but... No, I don't know. <laughs> when encountering the grass man, it is quite typical to find one in a foul mood. See, <laughs> how would anybody know that? Yeah how, what, how, yeah, how do you know what kind of a mood they have normally? I mean, do they ever seem like they're in a good mood? Do they, they give them a questionnaire. <laughs> do you ever feel like uh, losing Excuse me, sir. Team? Have you heard the good news of cheese? Um, I don't know, and a, and a foul order. The foul order is similar to the skunk ape of Florida. Again, that's not so specifically regional. There's foul orders reported around the world. Uh, oh. but, the, but the foul mood can be attributed to this member of the Bigfoot family using its size to its advantage. The grass man is the most aggressive member of the Bigfoot family, showcasing no fear around humans. Uh, and again, I don't know how they would so know that because... Kugway? Yeah, yeah, maybe. And uh, as well as being willing, uh, being willing enough to approach homesteads and camps of people in the area. And again, another common yeah. behavior all around. So uh, I don't know why that's distinct for this one. But interestingly enough, the majority of the reported sightings have occurred since the 1970s, after a family was reportedly attacked by a large, larger bipedal creature. But there have also been reports going back to the 1700s where Native American tribes in the area left food out in areas where the grass man was repeatedly seen to keep peace with the, with the wild ones of the woods. Finally, the practice of leaving food out for Bigfoot is a continuing practice in today's society for researchers and common squatchers to showcase they mean no harm to the region. Oh, that's going to become part of my lexicon now. Common squatchers. Common squat. Uh, yeah, would As we be common squatchers? Researchers. Yeah, there's researchers and there's squatchers, I guess. As common squatchers. <laughs> squatcher. So they must be like, you know, the low level, you know, hey, let's go kill a Bigfoot. Or, yeah, hey, let's go get in the truck and see if we can find some tracks. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, so everything of that was attributed. Did you bring any of them tortilla chips? <laughs> <laughs> I love <Sorry>. some tortilla. <laughs> Sorry. Gracias. <laughs> Gracias for your tortillas. Um <laughs> All right, we're not really we're, this. We're getting in trouble. No, nah, we're not. <laughs> we're not really this stupid, but we just. Uh, I'm. We're both mostly mocking the common squatcher idea. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody's a common squatcher. I think people are, you know, of course, enthusiasts, and then there are researchers. Well, I, I would say maybe not common, but um, maybe ha 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 um, hobbyists. Hobbyists, yeah. 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 Maybe hobbyist yeah. is a better term. Casual. Like people that are going out, they're Casual not. Squatters. They're not dedicating a large uh, part of their life to it, but they go out and look when they can. Right. So here we have the Stonish Giant uh, Stone Men. And I'd heard this one before. But the Stone Men are key, are key parts of the Iroquois folklore that there were large creatures known for using stones in battle along with having the appearance that they were made out of stone as well, as well as having the ability to uproot a tree and use it as a weapon. But in all reality, they were not made out of, out of stone the stonish appearance was due to the constantly rolling in the mud and sand to build up layers of natural armor to assist in protecting themselves against the weapons of the times like arrows. I believe that. But the thicker skin was also capable of withstanding bullets as well. But these creatures were considered to be man, but they did not behave like the normal tribes and were considered to be dangerous. But as the Iroquois referenced the stone coats, stone giants, the English settlers use similar terminology to describe what they believe to be Bigfoot. Um, again, the, I don't know if the if the stories of them rolling in the in the mud and sand and stuff is is from the legends or is this just 
is this just somebody's idea? Well, that must be what it is. Now, because, I mean, who, who's observed this? Who, who can, how can this statement right. be so matter yeah. of fact? Like, well, it's a, it's a commonly known fact that the stone giants were not stone. They were just rolling in dirt and clay and stuff to make a so, so hard they were, coat. So they were <laughs> dread squatches. <so. laughs> they were dread squatches. Dread squatch. Yeah. Yep. There you go. But, uh, you know, I could actually believe that, that very easily that they figured out that, you know, sure. they could protect themselves with a coat, a coating of mud and, you know, and, mm-hmm. and because people do it too. There's tribes in Africa or tribes. I, well, okay, let me, I digress. I don't know where that tribe is, but they put, you know, they they put red mud on themselves and in their hair mm-hmm. and they wear the red mud and, you know, why not? Why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's... I it, mean, you know, that, that poison dart hits that mud and just bounces off. Sure, it's probably not going to... Maybe not going <laughs> to penetrate through. Probably. Um, yeah, I think it's it, it certainly wouldn't be out, out of the realm of possibility. Right. But, uh, you know, whenever statements are made just so factual, like, well, this is what they are and this is how they do it. Yeah. It's like, how do you, how do you really know that? Can you really know that? Maybe. I mean, perhaps this writer has a lot more knowledge or, or of, of some, you know, stories in the, in the First Nations that I don't, which clearly they, they seem to have done some really incredible research. It's just statements like that are like, wait, how do you know? Now comes the dust man. Um, the dust man, uh, or a, as it was originally tabbed, the dusk man, is a Bigfoot primarily seen in Washington County, Pennsylvania. This member of the Bigfoot is known for being one of the fastest Bigfoots and is with the speed to catch a white-tailed deer running at full speed. But the dust man was originally seen by the Native American tribes in the region and later by the European settlers through, throughout the state and region. Parents used to use, the, to use the story of the dust man to keep their children close during the day so they wouldn't run off too far and get lost in the woods. The story gained, uh, the story gained origin because they only saw the dust man at sunset or dusk. And over time, the name was misconstrued to the dust man by the children over time of repeating the name to their, their parents had told them to be vigilant of. But the theories of a dusk man are, are not only tied to the Appalachian mountain region, but similar stories have been tied to Native American tribes in the western part of the country. The Nisqually tribe, native to the Pacific Northwest of the country, has similar characteristics of a larger humanoid creature living in the darker depths of the forest. Which scares children, the species was mostly seen in the wee hours of the morning or the dying light of the evening. The similarities between these two stories are just two of multiple stories throughout the country, due to many different tribes detailing similar encounters with similar types of creatures. And again, I think they're the same creatures, it's just regionally disparate, but again, who knows. Uh, this image, image. oh, let me, uh, let me put a uh, copy of this. I don't think I did already, but let me put a copy of this in the chats as well for anybody that wants to either check out these links that are included um, in the in the narrative of the story, but also to look at some of the images that are posted throughout this article, as there is some good images. Um, it says, this image illustrates a balance of man, animal, and hairy man living cohesively in a region. But the perception of the relationship between the two species of man and hairy man changes between the tribes throughout the country. The majority of the tribes see Bigfoot as a cannibalistic killer, like the Wendigo, or they abduct members of the tribe when they do not have enough food. Or they are showcased as a creature that terrorize and pillage out of anger, or they would steal food and rations gathered up by the tribe as well. But there are others who see the relationship between both as peaceful and as a sign of companionship and acknowledgement, between their individual groups as they see the hairy man to have human characteristics and demeanor. Other tribes also see them as just the now, as, as just as the now opinions change over time. And I recommend reading the stories from the book in the citations. If you wish to learn more about the beliefs and the history between the native Americans and Sasquatch. Well, it's a, you know, it's an interesting article. And again, um, mountain monsters being the, the impetus for this, right. I think this person did it right in that they used the references from Mountain Monsters, 
without obviously relying real heavy on the research in the in the show. I hope. Yeah, I hope so too. I and it seems that he he did. Um, again, that was written by Michael Benton the second, and that was written May sixteenth of last year. He did a good job. It's very informative. Um, but if only for the histories, and and I think that that's that's the cool part. So. Yep. Take it or leave it, folks. But I think that was pretty well done. I didn't put it on the screen at all in the, since the break. Oh, you didn't, yeah. <laughs> that was only a paragraph anyway. But I gave you the link so you can check out <laughs> the last part and see the imagery and stuff. Um, so if you want to see more, go ahead, huh? Quit busting my chaps. All right, let's close that. Now, this was the legend. I'm not going to read that because it's an interesting story. But again, it's really dipped in i imagine parable and symbolism and stuff as much as it might be a uh, some history but anyway very interesting now i did pull this from the from the um the links at the bottom of the page and i thought oh this is actually encounters with the grass man the eastern bigfoot of ohio and um this is written by jennifer wilbur in june 24th 2020 so a couple of years ago and it comes from exemplar.com. I have a hard time believing this then. What? Well, her byline says, Jennifer Weber is an author and freelance writer from Ohio. She holds a BA in creative writing and English. What's the, what's the part part? A creative <laughs> English, the creative writing. Oh, creative writing. Uh, well, maybe these are, these are, let's see, let's just page through it here quick. Yeah, it looks like they got some good ones. It talks about the Minerva monster. That's a real story. I know early grassman sightings in the 1800s. So we'll go through this. Well, it as looks long as she keeps it, you know, I mean, when you tell me you're a creative writer, <laughs> and you want to you write something like this, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with a bunch of BS. It, it, well, there's always that, she's that risk. BA, she's got BS and BA. <laughs> or BA and BA BS. and BS, yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, I th it looks like just on scanning through the article, it oh, looks like. Oh, let's give her a shot. Let's give her a shot. So this is Encounters with Grassman, the Eastern Bigfoot of Ohio by Jennifer Wilbur, June 24th, 2020, from the site exemplar.com. It says, uh, what is Grassman? Grassman is a cryptid similar to Bigfoot. Again, I think it is Bigfoot, but it's just regional. That is reported to inhabit the grasslands of Ohio. It is also known as the Ohio Grassman and the Eastern Bigfoot. Grassman supposedly gets its name from the small hut-like nests it builds from tall grasses. Grassmen are reported to stand about seven to nine feet tall and weigh around 300 pounds. <laughs> no. no, 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 That's like, that's like, you know. <laughs> that would be like uh, anorexic yeah. grass man <laughs> might be like 300 pounds. Anorexic. Yeah, like, that's. That's just how much their bones weigh. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's like one of their bowel movements. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I had for lunch. <laughs> oh my goodness. According to witnesses and cryptozoologists, this cryptid is similar in appearance to the Bigfoot, but it's shorter and slightly more human-like. So that's in contrast to the last article where it said they were supposed to be the biggest. Um, the sightings in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Sightings of this creature have been reported in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and surrounding areas. And as an Ohio native, I visited this park numerous times, though I've never personally encountered the Ohio Grassman during my visits to the park. Many other Ohioans claim that they have. Based on the eyewitness accounts, I'm not sure if I'm brave enough to hike through the park at night. Are you? Well, no, probably not. I'm just going to go out and uh, openly admit that. Ohio, early Grassman sightings from the 1800s. According to Paul Seaburn from Mysterious Universe, the first Grassman sighted, by a modern people happened in 18 or 1869. This early sighting reported a nine foot tall bipedal ape like creature who was seen eating grass and wheat. Hmm. Another grassman sighted was reported later in the 1800s, according to the cryptid wiki. Uh, during this encounter that with the creature, grassman attempted to throw a man out of his carriage. The creature retreated when the man's daughter, who was riding as a passenger, began throwing stones at it. Oh, she's brave. She was sitting on top of a, like, in the driver's seat of the... Apparently she had a bucket full had, of stones. She must have had a bucket full of stones then, yeah. <laughs> Boy, yeah. she had some stones. <laughs> yeah, she did. That's quite a print there, isn't it? Wow. Um, this is by a family in Minerva, Ohio, uh, 1978. 
One of the most prominent sightings of Grassman happened in the small village of Minerva, Ohio. According to the cryptid wiki, in August of 1978, the grandchildren of two Minerva residents, Evelyn and Howe Clayton, encountered the creature while playing outside. The children ran inside, screaming about a hairy monster outside, and when the couple went outside to investigate, they found a hairy creature, which they estimated weighed about 300 pounds. Again, how big was it? Because that's must, I, I mean, yeah, that's, that's not a big weight. No. Uh, and resembled an ape with matted dark fur sitting in a gravel pit on their property while playing with trash. I believe that. <laughs> the, the couple quickly ran back inside, though this would be not be their last encounter with the grass man. Another night, the creature was seen looking through the Clayton's kitchen window. It disappeared, however, before Howe was able to get outside with his gun. Upon investigation by the local police, the creature was nowhere to be found, but there were still footprints from the animal left behind in the mud. A terrible smell, presumably left by the cryptid, still permeated the air. Oof. Later that year, the couple saw the creature again on top of a hill by a strip, of, a strip mine near their home one night. Then they observed two of the creatures on the same hill a month later in broad daylight. Yeah, they were saying, you, you thought I was alone? Uh-uh. You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. And he brought a friend. <laughs> hey, friend. <laughs> Just one. That might have been the only one it had, but uh, it's a show of force, Don. <laughs> there you go. Grassman encountered by hikers in 1995. An anonymous witness reported their 1995 encounter with a grassman to the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. On July 4th, 1995, three men decided to go for a night hike along the railroad that runs parallel to Riverview Road near Brandywine Ski Resort. That's a cool name, Brandywine. Yep. In Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Sure it wasn't in Middle Earth? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Around 11.30 p.m., the three hikers heard a high-pitched scream from the west, which they described as sounding similar to a coyote or peacock, but raspier. It's the, either a coyote or a peacock. <laughs> it's quite a, eh, we don't quite a spectrum there. But <laughs> could, be a, could be a hummingbird. <laughs> True. <laughs> the sound lasted only five seconds, and the hikers didn't think much of it, assuming it to be from some ordinary animal. After hiking further through the marshy clearing, they headed into a heavily wooded area for several minutes before deciding to head back. Upon re-entering the clearing, another high-pitched roaring sound came from the center of the marshy area of the clearing. And this time, the sound lasted longer, about 8 to 10 seconds, and sounded like it was very close, so like 50 to 75 feet away. Yeah, yeah that, would, that would be horrible. That would be a ruined day. Just then, a very large creature charged through the brush right at the hikers. And the creature, according to the witness, was bipedal and swung its arms as it ran through the water of the marsh. It moved extremely quickly for being chest deep in mucky water. The hikers ran at full speed back to their car, and the creature stayed near the edge of the swamp, and the three hikers were able to escape unharmed. Yeah, that would reset your pulse, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, and all oh, the Ohio Hall, of course, uh, in 2015. Local re Bigfoot researcher Charlie Page claims to have obtained an audio recording of Grassman's Howl in 2015. According to Mysterious Universe, or Universe writer... Paul Seaburn, the audio clip was recorded in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park near the I-271 overpass that borders Cuyahoga with Summit Counties. Page, Page recorded the sound from the scenic Hemlock Point where he picked up multiple howl sounds from different directions but seemingly from the same species. The Cuyahoga National Park is known for its caves and close proximity to local farms and which could provide ample shelter and food for a Bigfoot-like creature. I absolutely agree. Ah, uh, no doubt, yeah. Um, video evidence. Oh, really? Uh, I can't really play that. But um, according to a video published on YouTube by the user, uh, by the user Find Bigfoot, a grassman may have been recorded on video in February 2017. The uploader of this video believes that this could very well be a real grassman or Sasquatch because of the creature's posture, gait, and general behavior. He also believes that the creature resembles an authentic Sasquatch because it has a coned head and large arms, or long arms, rather. He feels that this is the best footage that he has seen of Bigfoot or Bigfoot-like creatures in several years. Huh. Okay. Well, there it is, I guess, on the screen for those of you that are walking or watching along with us on YouTube. Um, 
in the 1700s, Native Americans living in the Ohio grasslands. Oh, maybe I should cut it here because we got like a minute left before, yeah. or like 30 seconds before the break. So right. yep. we'll, we'll pause this here and pick it up on the other side. And then we got a little bit more. And then, by God, we're going to be out of time. Jeez. That's, right. yep. That's how we roll here on the portal, folks. So I'll just be rolling up to a burger joint, grabbing a burger, and eating it on the way home to go to bed. <laughs> Because that's the way I roll. You can go to Wendy's. Yeah, it's on the way. Yep, get a Frosty. Yep. Classic triple. I'm just telling you. That's I don't know, that's kind of stuff of a, dreams are made that's, of. That's a bit of a big one for me. Oh, it was. Oh, look. Oh, it was. Oh, here's Mr. Wes. Mr. Germer? Mr. Germer. How you doing, Mr. Wes? Good to see you, brother. He, he, he's walking in. Can I get a rum and coke double tall? <laughs> Somebody whip that man up a drink. All right. We are going to go to the break, folks, so don't go away. We'll be right back with the last part of the show. Last half. The last segment. Half hour. Oh, the last half hour. Yeah. What Don said. We'll be right back.
like that, man. The guy just shows up and he just starts, gives you the uppercut. Yeah. <laughs> he leaves this on for his dog to listen to. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> well, as long as it, you know, plays, you know, one after the other and we get hits and views for yeah, it. Yeah, we'll take we'll take the it. we'll take the views for sure. <laughs> we'll take the downloads, brother. I don't care. Put it on circle. Put it on repeat. <laughs> I'm good with it. <laughs> All right, folks. We are in the last stretch of the of the show tonight, and we're going through some uh, Bigfoot fun, as we like to have here on the show. Well, we like to have fun, any kind of fun, but tonight's flavor is Bigfoot, and we've been going through some. We've gone through some Native American legends and stuff, uh, and also now we're going through some Grassman reports, and these are really pr- pretty brief snapshots. But I, I, the, the, the takeaway is, is that if you hear of a report on the, that's mentioned on here, you can certainly go and look for more details. Um, the person is actually saying where they're finding the information. So I'm sure you can learn much more right. by looking at like the BFRO or the reports and stuff. Oh, I like looking at the talk. BFRO. Eric, Eric, is that Eric Spinner? Is that right? Squatch Talks? Oh, hey. Hey. Yeah. Welcome. Wow. We're just, we're just pulling the crowd tonight. Wow. We've got, yeah, we've got big hitters Sasquatch in the house. Sasquatch Chronicles, Squatch Talks. I'm telling you. Wow. People are showing up, Don. S- someday we might actually get over 10,000. <laughs> Time somebody recognize. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. So uh, let's continue on this article. We're about halfway through it, I think. What happened? You're still just laughing. That just <laughs> Wasn't that funny, Don, was it? it was, it's always funny. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> if it isn't funny, it's not fun. <laughs> That's true. Let's continue here. All right. So we're going through an article right now by from exemplar.com. Um, I suppose I should pan up and get the author's name again because we're reintroducing it here. Jennifer Wilbur wrote this on June 24th of 2020 and it's uh, encounters with Grassman, the eastern bigfoot of cuyahoga valley national park and uh there's a bunch of stuff going on over there but again it's ohio i mean <laughs> what, what's not going on everything's going on in ohio <laughs> that place is popping off right um did i read this part or no uh, no i did read about the evidence there we do yeah no. i didn't no i i thought i did no okay. scroll up a little bit all right oh wait on. Uh, b- 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 <laughs> yes, you did. Thank yes, you. you did. Sorry. Thank you. I thought I was losing it there for a minute. Well, no, yeah, I know I've lost it, but uh, anyway, I, I didn't realize <laughs> I'd lost that much of it. Um, could Native Americans have lived peacefully alongside the grass man? And these are some some really uh, compelling stories that come from First Nations uh, histories mm-hmm. or lore. I don't, I, I don't ever want to like degrade it in any way by saying it's lore because I, I, d- I think that that cheapens what it is, Legend. but... But they do have uh, a lot of different tribes have stories of, of even trading right. uh, actively with these creatures. Uh, and uh, some have had stories. Uh, I've bumped, I, I don't know if they're actually hi- historically accurate, but um, I've bumped into some people that claim that there, were, there was a shared dialect, like right. they could communicate right. with them back and forth. And I think that that's pretty interesting. And of course, if you listen to the Sierra sounds, they do seem to have a very complex language um, that's very, very different from anything that uh, you know, we have. But could they, could they learn our language? Well, we know they can mimic it. There's right. so many stories of, yep. of Bigfoot mimicking. Calling um, names. Yeah, calling names, calling yeah. calling people's pets out to the forest. Yeah. <laughs> Fluffy, <laughs> <Boo>! <laughs> come here, Buttercup. Oh no, don't come here. Um, but let's see what this says. In the 1700s, Native Americans living in the Ohio grasslands spoke of a, spe- a species, rather not a species, a species of bipedal ape man who lived in the area. According to the cryptid wiki, they call these creatures the wild ones of the woods. There's another name, Don. Lots yeah. of names tonight. These Native Americans would leave out food for, to the wild ones as a means of keeping peace with the creatures. Could the wild ones of the woods uh, spoken of by the Native Americans be the same creatures as the grass man? Could be. Uh, is that it? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I was expecting more from that segment. Differences between grass man and Bigfoot. Now, this is, I think, anecdotal at best, but let's see what they say. Many cryptozoologists believe that Grassman is a separate species from Bigfoot. I, I don't necessarily agree, but anyway. Uh, Grassman's diet allegedly consists of many, mainly of grass and wheat. What? How would they know? Now, how, well, how would they? How would they be able to? <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a, a, a being that's, you know, upwards of more than 300 pounds. That's for darn sure. <laughs> and I know that I pounds. can't live just on wheat, grass, and seeds. <laughs> what the hell do they think a Sasquatch is going to eat? I don't know. 
Probably classic My, triples from Wendy's. Yeah, well, that would be, <laughs> I suppose they could live on those. I, I, I think oh I might gosh. be able to. I don't think I'd live long, but I could live on them. <laughs> I would not have a real long lifespan, but no, they've I got to eat. They've got to eat so much more than that. They're, they're not panda bears, and even panda bears are no. stupid. And these slow. are these are omnivores. Yeah, I don't. I don't they have to be octunivores. Yeah, anything. Well, sure. Um, but Grassman's diet allegedly consists mainly of grass and wheat, while Bigfoot has a fondness for apples. Grassman is also apparently often seen in groups, unlike the more solitary Bigfoot. Okay. Uh, unlike Big, I don't know where... Uh, assumptions. These are, uh, these are pretty, you know, pretty expressed distinctions. Like right. they got one in their garage they're studying, right, exactly. Wes. Um, they're really yeah, getting all this information. They're real researchers, <laughs> Wes. Oh my goodness! Unla unlike Bigfoot, the Grassman is also often associated with a foul order. Again, that's real. Well, that real be, common. That could be diet. <laughs> <laughs> it could eat be all that. Could all be all that, all that grass and wheat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'd I'd probably leave some uh, foul orders too. <laughs> Similar to that of the skunk ape in Florida, Grassman is also purported to be more violent than other similar okay, species. There's another one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where they're coming up with all these suppositions. Uh, you know, they're very distinct uh, d descriptors of a of a very nebulous uh, idea. I don't think anybody can can draw these distinctions so clearly, and and I know there's a, there's there's certainly the ability to observe behaviors based on you know researching to a degree. Like you can see maybe where they walk, and they seem to walk that way repeatedly. You can maybe find bones or things that they've they've potentially consumed right. and establish behavior that way. But I mean, there's the 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 evidences are so sparse and so scarce that it, it's 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 almost um, a hubris right. to come up with this much of, of uh, definitives of a, of a creature that you, you know, we can't even officially substantiate for the public. Speaking of definitives, what? read the next header. Oh, <laughs> Grassman Fact or Fiction. <laughs> All right, well, they're going to tell us whether it's real or not. There have been a number of reported sightings of this cryptid primate throughout the years, but is there any truth to these reports? Or is Grassman nothing more than a hoax and local legend? There we go again, Don. Do you believe in grass man? And if so, is the Ohioan ape man a distinct species of Bigfoot or from Bigfoot? Um, so there's the links and such for the story. Again, I mean, she did. You know, we never do read the comments. Well, yeah, I guess we could. It says, years ago, I was a correctional officer who worked for a state of uh, Ohio juvenile systems, and I transported prisoners to different facilities, most of which are located near woody areas, or one that scared me the most was in Columbus, near Mohican State Park. And I had to drive the van of prisoners up dark, curvy, wow. winding, wind narrow roads to get to the institution, no street lights, and there are many times I felt like someone was watching from the row of trees. I just passed, and a couple of times it looked like someone or something just look around a tree as I'm trying to see if I'm really seeing what I think I saw. <laughs> Many days I prayed that van wouldn't break down, and I believe something is out there. Mohican, Mo, uh, Maume, Salt Fork, and there was a place down below Can uh, Cincinnati by the Ohio, Ohio River. Wow. That's very interesting. Um, let's see if anything else. There's only three comments so far, but yeah, um, I mean, she did a good job on the article as right. far as it goes. But it's it's I, I really I really scoff at that when when they're just saying what something is and what something isn't, right? With some very nebulous reporting and, and some some very sparse uh, evidences, it's really hard to establish definitive behavior sets. I just don't think that that's I don't think that's responsible, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I don't think it's responsible to leave them food either. But that's just me. Um, the whole gifting and, and habitual habituating, I think is, is Wes says, Brent, play the video of the creepy video I posted on the blog. Let everyone give their feedback, good or bad. There's no copyright. And I promise not to turn my seven attorneys loose on you like Mr. Burns. <laughs> oh boy. All right. If you promise to play nice, uh, let me look, uh, where's your, where's your blog? I know I got it up well, here got somewhere. got it up. Yeah. I just got to see where. Yeah, no, you just got to keep it up. I just <laughs> you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose microphone privileges, Don. <laughs> I'm the hell was that? Gosh, I'm talking about your Tabathon over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, Sasquatch yeah. Chronicles. We'll do it this way. Let's check out which one is he talking about. Let's see which one are you talking about? The Fresno Nightcrawler. That's one. I think what? that's the one he's talking about. 
The, oh, the oh that is it? No, no, it. this isn't the one. That I I don't know. Is it the Fresno Light Nightcrawler? What what are you what are we talking about here? The creepy one. There was a there was another one like this though that he posted, and I I I gotta find that one. I think. I don't think this is the one. He I said want. no, it's not the Fresno. Okay, is it? When did he say he posted it? I, he doesn't say. Play the video, creepy right video here. posted on the blog. Let everyone think. Werewolf. Which one is it? Um, let me get to the. Let's just push the blog, and narrow this down, folks. We're gonna find out. Um, shoot. There's do not have thumbs. I don't know if I can actually, because it's going to be like dead air to TFR if I don't set up the, the iPad for it. You know what? I, if it's okay with you, Wes, I'll, I'll play it tomorrow night if you don't mind. I have to set up specifically for that in order for the sound to go both to TFR and to the YouTube. But I, I'd love to play it. If you don't mind, that'd be awesome. Um, I just, and let me know for sure which one it is. I know the one you're talking about because I know I looked at it. I thought it was on, on, uh, on Facebook, but it's really kind of creepy. But yeah, we'll we'll cover it tomorrow I, because I I'm not set up for the sound in order to go to the network and to YouTube right now. But we will continue on here. Hold on, let me figure out what we're reading next here. I gotta find my way back. Um, monster tail. No, I'm gonna skip that. <laughs> Um, this one is from Nick Redfern. I think we can cover this. Oh. Nick's articles are usually pretty tight and concise. There yeah. You go. Yep. Um, this is from Mysterious Universe. He says, if you play it tomorrow, expect a phone call from my seven attorneys. <laughs> Don will be my co host by 8 a.m. <laughs> hey, you know what? If it pays better, <laughs> <laughs> chances are it would, just for the record. Um, <laughs> But I can't I can't play it tonight because I would I would be sending <laughs> so dead air to half so of the audience. So you only have copyright rights to it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. And my seven lawyers. All right, so <laughs> thank you, Maggie. <laughs> well, I'll get my three public defenders and, <laughs> and they, see your seven lawyers. They work pro bono. <laughs> you can go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> uh, wow okay. all right let's get to this article and this is uh this is from mysteriousuniverse.org and this is an article not from our usual friend mr brent swanser but this is from nick redfern who's oh, also wow. another another <laughs> contributor oh thank you maggie <laughs> we enjoyed having you and as now well. i shot a penicillin <laughs> do you get a rash? What's going on you over gave there? Gave you the clap. Oh, <laughs> all right. So <sorry. laughs> why do I have to explain this? You got. I'm just. Every I'm time. an innocent mind, Don. You're corrupting the hell out <laughs> of me. Innocent mind, my back end. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is an article called "Bigfoot, Crazy Bears, and Accounts of Native American People," and uh, we're going to get into this. This is from July 25th, 2020. MysteriousUniverse.org. Definitely check out this site. It's a great site if you haven't already. We've certainly featured it many times on the show with Brent Swanser articles, but I want to read you guys this, this one since it sticks with our Bigfoot theme. And it says, although the term Bigfoot was not coined until the late 1950s, it's a fact that reports of giant hairy humanoids creatures inhabiting the wilder, mountainous, and forest forested areas of the United States date back to the earliest years of Native American culture. Lauren Coleman excuse me, one of the world's leading authorities on Bigfoot says, when Europeans colonized the, from the east to the west, their initial encounters were with the rare eastern Bigfoot, which the natives they spoke about, which they natives they spoke about. Okay. The first Americans acknowledged these hairy races and their tales come down to us in the records that eth ethnographers, folklorists, and anthropologists have preserved in overlooked essays on hairy, hairy giant legends and myths. There is, however, something very intriguing about the American, Native American beliefs in Bigfoot. They suggest the creatures are far more than they appear to be. That is to say, they do not just represent an undiscovered kind of North American ape, but something directly linked to the UFO phenomena. Ooh. So here we go with the, cro the crossroads here. The Native American, the Native language website states the Bigfoot figure is common to the folklore of most Northwest Native American tribes. Native American Bigfoot legends usually describe the creatures as around six to nine feet tall, very strong, hairy, uncivilized, and often foul-smelling. Usually living in the woods and often, 
often foraging. That's offaging. That's both words combined. Uh, foraging at night. In some native stories, Bigfoot may have minor supernatural powers. The ability to turn invisible, for example, but they are also always they are always considered physical creatures of the forest, not spirits or ghosts. That is where the in, the intertribal Bigfoot similarities end, however. In the Bigfoot myths of some tribes, Sasquatch and his relatives are generally shy and benign figures. They may take things that do not belong to them, or even kidnap a human wife, but they do not harm people, and even come to their aid. Sometimes Bigfoot is considered a guardian of nature in these tribes, and these more benevolent big feet usually appear alone or in a small family unit, and may exchange gifts or use sign language to communicate with the Native American communities. But Bigfoot legends from other tribes describe them as malevolent creatures who attack humans, play dangerous tricks on them, or steal children, and they may even eat people. Mm. This most, these most dangerous Bigfoot monsters, known as stick Indians or bush Indians, are sometimes found in large groups or even villages which engage in warfare with neighboring in American Indian tribes. Good night, Wes. All right, good night, Wes. Thanks for stopping in, brother. Uh, one of the most fascinating cases of relevancy came from James Wyatt of Memphis, Tennessee, who shared with the, le the late paranormal expert Brad Steiger a copy of his, Wyatt's, grandfather's journal from 1888. It described the old man's exposure to the Bigfoot phenomena. The location was the Humboldt Meridian in northwestern California. Mm. It was quiet, quiet uh, it was while in the area, rather, on one particular day that Wyatt's grandfather encountered a tribesman carrying a plate of raw meat. Puzzled, he asked what it was for. After pondering on things for a while, the man motioned Wyatt Sr. to follow, and on arriving at a cave built into a cliff face, he was shocked to see a huge, hair-covered man-like beast. It was, however, quite docile, and enthusiastically ate the meat provided for him. Ah. It was then that Wyatt's grandfather got the full story. The beast, nicknamed Crazy Bear, had supposedly been brought to the forest from the stars. Ah. Nothing less than a small moon had descended, ejecting both the creature and several others of its kind. The moon was reportedly piloted by very human-looking entities that always waved at the Indians when they dumped their hairy beasts onto the land. James C. Wyatt asked Brad Steiger, who is to say the crazy bears weren't exiled to our planet for some crime or other, other infraction of the laws of another planet. Well, see, now it's funny uh, because uh, Eric Spinner from Squatch Talks, who's in the, in the, mm -hmm. um, we were talking about this on his, the show he was on just what last week or mm -hmm. the week before about, you know, maybe they're not necessarily from somewhere else, right. but they are being abducted as well, which would make perfect sense for me, sure. uh, to me. So, you know, here we are talking about, well, now there's somebody's um, uh, postulating that maybe they were exiles from another planet. No, they're, you know, nah, I don't think that's it. I think, I think they're just seeing you know, released them released back into the wild from their sure, abductions. Sure. Yeah. Know, but uh, no, I don't think they're from a different planet. No, I think they're terrestrial. Yeah. That's uh, I, I tend to agree with you. I mean, it's, it's not to say that they, there couldn't be um, something of, you know, like Chewbacca's out there in space, yeah, exactly. but are these them? And I, no. I don't know. I, I mean, the the histories of course go back quite a ways and it's, you know, much, I don't know, every nation around the world would have these. I mean, or yeah. most nations, uh, most continents around the world would have some form of this phenomena. Right. That seems like an incredible feat if they managed to populate the entire globe with these crazy bears. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It, it is interesting, though, because, of course, that's that's another piece of that puzzle, and, and it's something to, to consider. Right. Is it impossible they could be from another planet? Oh, hell well, no. no. Um, of course not, but... I don't know. It just seems to me that, it, it, I don't know. It just. Well, you know, and, 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 you know, I, you know, when you're talking about aliens though, I always have to argue with people right. about, you know, um, are aliens from God are aliens made by God or we, oh. are they, you know, this kind of thing. And I always go to the idea that, you know, who's to say that, um, aliens aren't, a form of angel, you know, some type of an angel. Because if you look at some of the illustrations of some yeah. of the angels, 
They look like they're spaceships. scary. <clears throat> they look like spaceships or yeah. aliens in of themselves. Sure. Um, there's this one that's supposedly an eye, and you know the, the I don't know what it's called, but it's got the the sphere in the middle, and it's got the the rings that roll around it. Sure. There's supposedly one angel that looks like an eyeball that has these rings that move around it. Sure. Now that's pretty freaking scary, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, who's to say, so this is where I get in arguments with um, people who believe in that kind of stuff. Angels and angels are beautiful and blah, blah, blah. As far as I understand in the Bible, <laughs> angels in general are not beautiful. <laughs> They're yeah. scary as hell. Right. But, um, you know, but then again, you know, here we are looking at somebody postulating, you know, that they, they, the lore of the First Nations is saying that they believe that it could possibly be sure. Bigfoot and, or, but the other thing that really makes me think that no, they've been here, is the fact that there is, at least, there's at least several potential pr progenitors of what became Bigfoot. Um, there's several potential creatures, you know, and some some there's different different. Uh, different names like Heidelbergensis and uh, Gigantopithecus blackie. Right. And there's, there's, there's another one. Actually, Eric was on the show that I was watching that there's a, it was with uh, um, Eric Mintel and he was talking about, no, he was, he, he, he had another name that I'd never heard before. And I can't remember what it was. Eric, if you can remember that. Oh, uh, it was something like uh, G Gigantus something, it was just a whole different name, but it was very interesting. And he apparently heard that from a professor right. who said, well, you know what that is? You know what Bigfoot is? And, and the guy thought that the, the professor was going to make fun of it. And then he went on to go into this, this long diatribe of why it was this specific hominid. But um, I yeah, don't know. I can't, I can't remember what he said it was. Yeah. yeah. You remember that it was an older guy with that, that um, had like a, a white beard and stuff? I think he had a white beard, but he was just a, an incredibly intelligent guy. Very learned, but what is the uh, show says? No, it's not a... Gigantopithecus. No, sure, no, no. there's that, and then there's Gigantopis... I don't know. I, again, these are a lot of syllables. <laughs> right. Hey, can you give Gigi the clap, please? Oh, sure. <laughs> what did she do? She super chatted. Oh, nice. Very nice. Now Thank she you. Wants, she needs the poke of the butt. She needs the... Never mind. Okay. All right. We need to do something like that. Like <laughs> like it, it'll just pinch. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> yeah, okay. it's a all pinch. right. Made me all uncomfortable here. But uh, so far, we're still monetized. So, oh, all right. Um, oh, you're... Did not Denisovians know. Denisovians? Well, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, uh, there's some people that throw that name around as well, but I can't remember the name. And as, if Eric is in here, I don't know. Yeah, he might've, I, I don't, yeah. he might've left, but anyway, it was a, it was a very interesting name, but what is it? I don't know, but there is definitely some, uh, there's definitely something in the fossil record or several, uh, possible. Here you go with the fossil record. Again. <clears throat> well, I mean there, but this is things that have been discovered. These different hominids that have been discovered that would seem to be the forebearers of what be, has become Bigfoot. Right. Sasquatch, Yowie's, Yaren, whatever name you want to throw at them. But um, it could be. Tom Carey is the name of the person who used that term. Eric says it was Tom Carey who used it, but he doesn't remember the word. Yeah, it was a huge right. bunch of silk. And no, he said that Gigantopithecus was actually the, the forebearer of what became orangutans. Right. Um, and King so, Louis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like King Louis from the Jungle Book was supposed to be modeled on the what of Gigantopithecus looked like, um, at least in the more recent um, what uh, the more recent uh, version right, of it. Right. Yeah, sorry, I <laughs> sometimes lose I words. Think, I, 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 I can't think. <laughs> it's too late. I can't think. <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this has been our jaunt through some uh, histories of the Bigfoot. Right. I hope you found some merit in our discussion tonight and something to add to the growing body of, of ideas of what the Bigfoot is. I don't know. I, I mean, it's anybody's guess, but uh, I again, you run across articles much like some we covered tonight where they're very, very distinctively citing what is behaviors of this versus this versus this. And I, and I always take caution to that because we don't know. <laughs> we don't know what these things are and what they do and what they eat. And, and I mean, we have ideas of some things, but 
Brent, are you are you think of Grover Krantz? No, it wasn't Grover Krantz. It was uh, Tom, well, Tom Carey. According Tom to Carey. Yeah. yeah, he was on a show with with Eric Spinner uh, more recently, and and throw out this name. And I'll fi- I'll try to find that name. I'll try. To, I'll have to yeah, maybe just, ask Eric Mantel if he remembers it. Like two episodes ago. So. Yeah, yeah. It was it was very interesting though. But uh, he had a great narrative uh, to this discussion with a with a professor. Oh, but there it is. There's the bell, folks. That's it for us. We love you all. Be good. Be kind. Be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day, and remember to laugh as much as you can. See you tomorrow night, night. right here, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Bye. Boom.